Donald Trump is fresh off the defamation E. Jean Carroll trial. And now he's back to the civil fraud trial in New York, where he's potentially facing hundreds of millions of dollars that he might owe. But on top of that, we have this new bombshell revelation from a court appointed financial monitor that has been going through all of the Trump organization paperwork and tracking things that are there, things that should perhaps be there, things that shouldn't perhaps be there. And here is what the the monitor found. They say that a letter from a former judge now claims that Trump may have lied about the existence of a $48 million loan. So in this federal judge, former federal judge, Barbara Jones writes that the financial information that was given to her by the Trump team has contained both incomplete and inconsistent disclosures containing multiple errors. And she said specifically, when I inquired about this loan, I was informed that there are no loan agreements that memorialize the loan, but that it was a loan that was believed to be between Donald J. Trump individually and Chicago unit acquisition for $48 million. However, in recent discussions with the Trump org, it indicated that it is determined that this loan never existed and thus that it would be removed from any upcoming forms submitted to the Office of Government Ethics. It would also be removed from subsequent versions of ML. So they said that there was a internal loan where Trump lent money to an entity that he owns that does exist. But that doesn't appear to line up with the claims that had already been documented about this $48 million loan. And look, I don't know exactly all of the ways that a fancy pants rich guy and his team of lawyers can use a claimed but non-existent $48 million loan to influence a variety of things, which could be potentially the ability to get other loans, your tax burden, a variety of things like that. But if it's there and if it never existed, I don't think that this is a simple clerical error. We know this is this goes to the very heart of what Donald Trump is in his organization are being accused of in this trial, which is that they play fast and incredibly loose with the facts when it benefits them for insurance purposes, for loan purposes, and for tax purposes. And this could be like this one little thing that they found now is by itself potentially a massive financial effect on the overall case. So we're gonna see if this comes up this week, if there are others like this. But Adrian, what do you think about this revelation and about the civil fraud trial? I think it is a hell of a revelation and it speaks to the existence of fraud. You know, this isn't something that is an accident or could have just happened, you know, by plain error. This is something that you consciously have to decide to do. And if an individual is engaging in this kind of behavior once, I would like to think when it comes to economics and finances, especially given Trump's reputation and history, this is probably a pattern in practice. And so hopefully the prosecution, you know, really slow slaps him in the face with it, and he's gonna be held accountable for this. I just, it's so exciting, all of this accountability for Donald Trump, and it's just the dollar signs, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah and by the way, the, the dollar sign, the dollar sign could be before the number 370 million. <laughs> Who knows, I mean, look, maybe more after all. With the E. Jean Carroll uh, trial, he ended up owing way more than it had been asked for. And he doesn't need it to get inflated much more from what's being already requested. For it to potentially utterly wipe him out financially. And I'll give you the, yes. those details in just a sec. But before we give you those details, uh, while he is no longer bleeding about E. Jean Carroll and True Social, that has only freed him up to talk more about these other cases, which he has done at length. Take a look at this. I'm obviously not reading all of those, but that is, that's a lot. For a guy who arguably never wrote a single word of the many books of his that he's published, he sure is putting down a lot of words on True Social, and some of it is hilarious. So I'm gonna read just a couple of excerpts though. He talks about how the judge should have announced that Trump did nothing wrong. I don't know why the judge would do that, but he goes on to list no victims, no fraud, no crimes, happy banks. So if the banks are happy, how could it be fraud? I mean, if the fraud benefits you and another organization, it can't be a crime, right? I don't think that's how it works. But then he goes on to attack the attorney general, who he says sat comfortably and confidently in court with her shoes off, arms folded, a Starbucks coffee, and a big smile on her face. This is all compelling argumentation for why he is not guilty of fraud in the Trump organization. I mean, I didn't know that she drank Starbucks because that means 
I don't know, but something bad, I guess. He thought it was compelling enough to put there. And look, he goes on to talk again. He really does seem to think that if he claims things like how he didn't put down in his financial worth my most valuable asset, my brand and goodwill, mm. that that makes them conservative. So you're telling these people are gonna have to evaluate whether you have committed, your organization has committed pervasive fraud, that you seriously considered adding in the goodwill people have for you as part of your financial valuation. And that's supposed to be proof to us that you wouldn't budge the numbers. But anyway, the, the only number that truly matters at the end of the day, if he is found guilty of this, and if there is a big penalty levied against him, is that he apparently only has an estimated $426 million in cash and liquid assets that could potentially be used for these court payments. Okay, so there's other stuff. There's cryptocurrency, there's loans to his children, which I would love it if they refuse to give that money back. He's got, you know, like real estate that he can liquefy or whatever. But at that point, you're talking about unwinding the entire Trump empire. But in terms of actual money, he only has 426, sorry, 426 minus 83.3 million dollars. So if they get in New York, what they're asking for in this trial, that could potentially utterly wipe out all of his liquid wealth. Now, maybe he can make up a little bit of that with fundraising or something. Maybe he can do cameos, but at some point we might see actual real estate needing to be sold off. Adrian, what are your thoughts? You know, I what bothers me most of what you said was the whole Starbucks coffee thing. This is New York, baby. She, she what, Attorney General, she should have been up in Dunkin' Donuts. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can fully support him in bringing that up. And it does make me re-question the entire prosecution. That's it, that's all I got for you. I'm ridiculous. Um, I'm glad that he was able to get through, I think, you know, granted, I did not look at everything that he posted. I don't think he made any racist comments this time around, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's starting to learn a little bit about making fact free claims against people uh, on social media. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.